B movie. Okay, look, from Wikipedia, I can just tell you really fast. It was made in 2007. I didn't see this movie when it came out. I recently saw this movie. And I, there was all this hype about how great it was. Of course, there's all of the internet memes going around about the B movie. So I thought, I'll see this. It has Jerry Seinfeld in it. I'm not a Jerry Seinfeld fan. I mean, what's the deal with Jerry Seinfeld? But seriously, don't care. Thought I'd watch it. It's got Renee Zellweger in it. She's okay. I mean, in the movie, not so much, but I mean, as a person, actor, okay. It has Matthew Broderick in it. Now, listen, he has been in a series of terrible B movies. Inspector Gadget. Okay, that's the first one I thought of. But of course, I know him from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, John Goodman is in it as a bad guy. John Goodman plays a very good bad guy in this movie. Chris Rock is in the movie, being Chris Rock, essentially. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit, of, of course, about Patrick Warburton. Patrick Warburton uh, is in the movie. He is one of the characters. And I do enjoy him as an actor. As a matter of fact, I do a pretty good Patrick Warburton. I mean, you know, mostly from uh, The Emperor's New Groove. But I do like him. He's a good actor. Good actor in a movie. B-movie. It's written by Jerry Seinfeld. And it's... It's weird. It's the dad part of me loves all of the dad jokes in this movie. There are so many puns involving bees. So I would think the dad side of me would think this would be funny. It's not. It's it's not funny. It's it's just not a funny movie. I, I wish I could like tell you why I think it's not funny. I mean, that is why I'm here. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit. One of the things with this movie that bothers me is that the computer animation is just a little bit, it's a little bit off. I, if you don't know about the uncanny divide, the uncanny divide is when uh, something that is robotic looks so close to human-like that it creeps you out because it's not quite right. And Renee Zellweger's character was that in this movie. Her eyes... I don't know if she had a lazy eye or something about the way she looked really, really bothered me. It just was very, very unsettling for me. But what is this movie about? Okay, the premise. The premise is that there's this whole entire bee civilization. And they speak English and they uh, have us all the markings of a civilization and an industrialized society they have different bees who have different purposes. And so on the surface, the premise was like, okay, I can sort of get that. So a honeybee named Barry, played by Jerry Seinfeld, is going to go out and explore the world. And on the surface, this seems to be your typical, your typical kids kind of movie. You know, there's this entire bee world, and now he's going to go out and see the rest of the world and see the human world. Of course, they give him the stern warning not to talk to humans. So at first, I'm kind of like, okay, is he actually talking to humans? Do humans understand him? And sure enough, that is actually what happens. Barry goes out and meets a human. Her name is Vanessa. And he discovers that human beings eat honey. And so, of course, there's a lawsuit filed. And the movie at this point starts to go off the rails. It really it gets into that preachiness of movies. And I'm going to take a second and ramble here for a second about preachy movies. Dear Hollywood, stop making preachy movies. I don't want to hear movies preaching an environmental message. I didn't like it in Fern Gully. I didn't like it in Pocahontas. I do not care for your preachiness about the environment. There are two reasons for this. One, because a lot of Hollywood people jet set around in planes and spend all of this money and make this giant so-called carbon footprint. So to get up on your high horse and tell me we shouldn't take honey from bees or we shouldn't harvest the rainforest to fuel the wonders of an industrial world or to tell me that land can be owned by everybody. I'm sorry. Get out of here, communism. That's not how this world works. I am very much a person about the free market. I am very much a person about the wonders of industrial society. And I'm very much about honey. One thing that people don't understand, and one of the things that really upset me about this movie, is that 
it's giving beekeepers a bad name because they're stealing the honey. Let me tell you something. Beekeepers are people who actually go out and help the bees. They feed them in the winter. I don't know if you know that. Maybe you did not know that. But beekeepers do not run around and steal honey from bees. Beekeepers take care of bees. They check the hive. They make sure they have enough food. They make sure they have enough water when there's no water in the summertime. They check on the queen. They make sure that the queen is made because sometimes bees have issues and they don't make queens properly. So a true beekeeper actually takes care of the bees and harvests the extra honey because here's what happens. When a beehive gets too big, they swarm. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like being attacked by tens of thousands of bees. I actually have footage showing swarming bees in my hometown in Ohio because it's a thing. If a beehive gets too big, it swarms and swarms can hurt people. Swarms can hurt animals. Swarms can hurt things. And then the honey that they're making is not actually useful to society at all. So beekeepers have a very important role in our society. So I really get mad at this movie because it gets on its high horse about how people steal honey from bees. That's not actually true. I'm sorry, that's totally false. It's some false Hollywood narrative out there to, to tell you about bees. Bees repollinate the world's flowers. They pollinate. They do all of their bee stuff. And you know what? Beekeepers help preserve bees. They actually lobby to make sure that uh, pesticides aren't put down on fields so that bees can actually harvest clover and uh, maple and all of the different things. Believe it or not, bees actually harvest maple from maple trees. I have a beehive near my house and when the maple trees come on in the spring, guess what? You can smell maple f smell honey in the hive. Now we don't harvest that honey. The honey is used to help the bees survive until they put up extra honey at the end of the season. Hollywood, don't go preaching to me about bees. You don't know anything about it. I'm sorry, Jerry Seinfeld. You don't know anything about it. It's just dumb. I'm sorry. It's just dumb. A couple other things in here, this movie that really bothered me. One was the relationship between Barry and Vanessa. It was weird. It was weird. It was not proper. It just was not proper. I'm sorry. Let's see. What else do I not like about this movie? Oh, again, I wanted to laugh at the bee jokes. I'm a dad. I laugh at dad jokes. Didn't laugh. I all, I cracked a grin one time. One time in the whole movie. There's a point in the movie where Barry talks about things that humans have stolen from the bees. And one of the things he says is, be Jesus. Okay, that made me crack a grin. That's funny. It's probably because my parents were going to beat the bee Jesus out of me as a child. I don't know. That part was funny. Other than that, not really. No, not funny. It just wasn't. So, what do I recommend as far as alcohol with this movie? To be honest, mead. Yes, mead. If you don't know what mead is, well, okay, I'm sure that there are a few people who know what mead is. If you don't know what mead is, mead is an alcoholic beverage that is made from fermenting honey. And it is delicious. It is very floral, very flavorful. So if you had to watch this children's movie with alcohol, which I don't know why you would do either of those things, watch this children's movie with alcohol or watch this children's movie. But if you're going to do that, this would be it. The other thing I didn't really like about this movie, just in conclusion, is that at the very end of the movie, all of a sudden there's all these insects rights people, insects are filing about, you know, suits against animals and humans. And unfortunately, it teaches this message to kids that you know, we have to respect the rights of animals. I'm sorry, they're animals. They have no rights. They have the right to be eaten. They have the right to be taken care of. I'm sorry. For those of you who don't like industrialization, let me lay it out for you real quick here. For all of you millennials who don't like industrialization, for all of you millennials who think you own whatever land you land on and all that garbage, listen up. Take a week. Go live outside. Live outside for a week. Build a house outside. Live outside. Drink water outside. Eat the food that's outside. Try to survive outside. Dig a hole with which to go potty in outside. And let me tell you something. You will suddenly discover that the wonders of our industrial society, electricity, hot air, cold air, food that won't kill you, waste treatment, are wonderful things. And the byproduct of these wonderful things is that we have to innovate different ways to deal with some of the issues that come out of that. Let me tell you something. 
we live today better as a society than the Caesars of Rome. We live better than the kings and queens of Europe. We live better today than the emperors of China. And why? Because of industrialization. Because we do things like take honey from the bees. This has been Bee Movies with Booze. Sorry for the political rant, folks, but I'm really tired of environmental movies masquerading as children's films. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Oh, and you can follow me on Twitter at at RealWilliamBooze or on Reddit, Reddit user BillBooze.